In this video, I'm going to show you an explanation for the Fermi bubble. And this currently unsolved. Aside from the Fermi bubble, I'm going to show you some beautiful renders which more than 10 years old and I'm going to explain what you see there where is it coming from and how does this relate to string theory and quantum gravity now some of you are the members of academia and well known in the academic fields but I suggest you to pay attention and take notes of what you see here because what I'm explaining in this video is testable if you haven't seen the previous video I strongly suggest to start with that so you understand the subject of this video now, there were many attempts to derive a quantum theory of gravity and so far there is none successful attempt there were many great minds who worked on this in the past and everybody gave up on this and deemed unsolvable all these people contributed to this problem individually and all of them made significant contributions to tackle this issue even though we have numerous attempts on different formalism like string theory, loop quantum gravity, causal triangulations, asymptotic safe gravity and so on there is no successful theory now in terms of quantum gravity what you want to do you want to unify electromagnetism and gravity gravity is described by Einstein's relativity and is extremely successful on the other hand you have quantum theory which describe the smaller scale giants of our times like Feynman and many more gave us certain tools to use to make physics easier to understand but for instance, in case of Feynman, the so-called Feynman diagram show you a potential transformations of ingoing and outgoing particles from interactions. Now, although Feynman diagrams works really well for this purpose, in the same time, you have to realize that gravity is correspond to coupling between objects seemingly without source so you can imagine a collision of stars or objects in space and you see a gravitational attraction which influence their trajectory when this coupling is strong they collide and get binded or have a gravitational bound now Einstein gave us a description of this with space-time curvature so the theory of quantum gravity has to contain both the space-time curvature or the dynamics of these collisions how this bound or coupling takes place but on the level of quantum as I showed you in the previous video the simulations you see 
is coming from string theory. I showed you the manifolds for the vacuum. I showed you the ground state. And I told you that the vacuum manifold corresponds to a superposition of harmonic oscillators. These harmonic oscillators have a certain gauge which corresponds to the symmetries of the vacuum manifold. Because of this superposition, you have emergent higher symmetries. When you put this on a lattice, you get a description of potential interactions in every point in space corresponds to this symmetry and the potentials corresponds to transformations. These transformations get a translation corresponds to topology. In order to understand these interactions, we have to look at space-time symmetry. What you see on the right-hand side is the space-time symmetry, what we respect. On the left-hand side, you see another space-time symmetry, which I suggest is the correct one. As you can see, on the left-hand side, you have a six-point axis, where two axes show a squeeze from four points, while the other axes show you a stretch or a repulsion from the other axis. This have great significance, not only to quantum gravity, but to the Fermi bubble as well. Now, as I go further, always keep in mind this image from the left-hand side of this symmetry. You're going to see a series of renders. Now, because I spent a couple of years to look at these renders and trying to make these visuals easy to understand. At one point, I managed to show eigenvalues. What you see is the eigenvalues corresponds to this vacuum manifold and the transformations which arise corresponds to the deformation. As I said before, if you use the inverse Laplacian, you can derive a wave function and time. So, from the perspective of the vacuum manifold, there is no time. However, once you perform the transformations, you can derive time from a sourceless point. In other words, my representation of these functions and the visual what you will see is coming from the vacuum manifold and there is no scale beneath this. In other words, this is the smallest possible scale. So, as you can see, I color-coded the bound state. Now, this bound state is a superposition of electromagnetic fields. What you see is the topological charge order of fluxes corresponds to deformation and vacuum manifold. The order is coming from the vacuum manifold because all these transformations based on the symmetry. When I run the simulation, you see that the visuals and the objects are emerging from a point without source. So this is not a scattering. In Feynman diagrams, you describe a particle interaction which is already exist and you get a different output by interacting with another particle. However, in this case, what you see now, there is no particle 
coming in to the scattering is the function which is coming from the potential. What you see, even though this is the smallest scale, you see a collision or a dynamics of stars orbit around each other, just like in general relativity. In other words, because the coupling consists in this visual, but in the same time, I'll show you the electromagnetic flux and the interaction of these potentials. What you see here is the theory of quantum gravity. To understand better the theory of quantum gravity is a theory of simultaneous scattering and collision. So you have the interaction of these electromagnetic fields, but in the same time you have the dynamics what is described by the relativity when stars collide or objects collide. In the scattering, you cannot show binding effect which hold the two objects together. However, even though I do the deformation and you have the repulsive effect from these fluxes, I'll show you that that this state is binded and attracted in the same time. The geometry, what you see, is the eigenvalues of these transformations. This process is universal. For instance, in cell division, cells divide because of this repulsion. In the same time, you have a confinement and deconfinement, just like in physics. The shape of your ear and the geometry of you is the result of this order, which corresponds to this manifold. When you understand is that this is universal, you understand that when you grow, is the same stretching comes from this repulsion where you born and your body is a cocoon or a bulk. This bulk give you a boundary of you defined by these topological orders. And when you die, this cocoon is breaking or dissolve in a sense, where you deconfined and you no longer locally well defined because of the confinement corresponds to chemical potentials as you interact with the environment. But let's speak about the Fermi bubbles. As I told you before, the simultaneous compression and repulsion contribute to the emergence of bulk. The Fermi bubble is the same bulk emergence, what you see in the simulations. Now, I told you before that the system is two-dimensional, but once you have this deformation, bulk emerges. Through the deformation, you have gravity in one higher dimensions, but as consequence, you have the stretching of this bulk. The Fermi bubble corresponds to that space-time symmetry which I showed you on the left earlier on, where you have a four-point squeeze with two-point repulsion or stretch. So the Fermi bubbles emerges from this space-time symmetry and is a consequence of this black hole at the center. 
Now, what you see here is the Fermi bubble. Pay attention to the red region at the center and look on the right the color manifold. So what I'm postulating is that the Fermi bubble is coming from this hypercolor manifold. The geometry is represent the vacuum manifold beneath where is emerging from. In terms of the jets, the color manifold have something called color cones and the jets are a representative of these color cones. Now, since the Fermi bubble is stretching, but it have a finite energy cutoff, what you have to understand is that this energy cutoff, it doesn't correspond to the rotation of the black hole. Our black hole, Sagittarius A star, is a charged care black hole. If you would be on one end of the Fermi bubble and look down, you would see this image. And what you see is a black hole. And this black hole have a charge which is create a boundary around the internal region. This bulk is connected so it has two parts, the bottom and the top, is created by electromagnetic flux. The space, what you call black hole, is a physical boundary which is enclosed by the flux or the charges. If you would be able to overcome this flux, and you would attempt to travel inside, you would end up at the other end of the Fermi bubble. So you can travel between the two ends of the bulk. So the black hole is just a enclosed region of space by these charges. The point, what you see at the center, I highlighted by the density map. The density map show you the charges around the black hole and show you the center. And this density, what you see at the center, is the other end of the color cone. You directly see the other end of the Fermi bubble. Now, the good thing with the simulations that I can travel through this black hole with the camera. So when I done this, I got this image. What you see is a surface and the jet pointing outward. But this is a smooth surface. So the black hole is a flux where the two jets are connected with the black hole at the center where the charges wrap around it. Now, I've done the render of this. So here you can see the fields and the distortion of the fields. I've done also another render where I refine the mesh and you are able to see the fluxes with the edges in white color which show you the intensity because the hyperfine detail of the mesh you see the hydrodynamics of the black hole corresponds to the electromagnetic fluxes. To understand better 
every object in the universe are a consequence of this phenomenon related to the space-time symmetries and their formations. When two objects collide, let's say stars, essentially they couple to the potential of the superposition of electromagnetic fields corresponds to this vacuum manifold and this creates a consequence gauge potential because gravity is a gauge theory you can see the consequence of this upon these collisions even though we don't see the source of this binding it happens because every object in the universe tend to form bond states. The formation of galaxies and matter it starts from the bulk, but because of this binding related to coupling of angular momentum responsible for keeping matter together now because of the consistent repulsive force for instance when you see a supernovae is not related to a star collapse but is coming from this repulsion where the bulk stretches cut off and dissolve is permeate the surrounding with matter and particles those going to bind or create bond states also radiation now if we go back to the picture of the Fermi bubble you see that our galaxy lying on a disk for lower rotational dynamics now this is corresponds to that space-time symmetry which I showed you before where you have the squeeze from four points in two axes even though there is a condensation effect coming from this in our galaxy follow this order of bond states and every single object subject to this exact same phenomenon now to my friends in academia who involved in cosmology I would like to point out that you can look for Fermi bubbles you can measure the evolution and the process of this stretching because you can estimate the fate of when supernovae occur based on this ball cutoff furthermore if you are able to determine the time evolution of this stretching you can calculate or compare to dark energy this would have two consequences one we could derive if the emergence of these bulks or Fermi bubbles have the same timeline or it varies independently because if all of them have the same time evolution in terms of time and stretch it would show you that the value of dark energy is the same everywhere however if it would be different time associated with the stretching then it would show you that dark energy have different strength locally however what I'm saying is that every object which explode is the consequence of this repulsion and all observations of supernovae related to bar cutoff when I rotate this image and you get rid of the dust and matter around 
the only thing you see is the two jets. This is the bulk, completely stretched out. And I show you this in my simulations. How does it look like in a continuous process? Now, in terms of space-time symmetry, when I perform the renders, I changed many times the parameters of the deformation and the corresponding phases. What I found is that some states are stable and some states blowing up. You can see this in the simulations where the red and the blue side remain consistent during the transformation and they are binded. But when you have a blow up, you see one, one side of the bound state give you a smooth geometry while the other side is repel or discharge. So some of these symmetries stable and some of them are not because the fermi bubble is based on the color manifold you can create much better maps and you can derive the mechanism as i'm showing you here this doesn't require supercomputers you just need the correct theory and while String theory is crucialized because some of the other members think is a waste of time. Even though string theory have to correct some of its issues, as I showed you here, string theory is a candidate for quantum gravity for a reason.